I'm Kira. This is Big Daddy. <laughs> um, everybody was asking if we could give a little insight to um, our marriage and how we saved it when we were 30 days out from divorce and a little bit of background about what caused the almost divorce. So Big Daddy and I have been together since 2006. Um, we got married in 2014. And in the in May of 2016, we're married. In May of 2016, we separated for almost a year. So it was about ten months of us being separated. Um, and during that separation, I moved out. Um, we both dated different people. Um, we ran into each other, and that was kind of the start of our reconciliation. So, like when it all comes down to it, all of it was really stupid and could have been um avoided had we dealt with our marriage between us as opposed to involving everybody else outside of our marriage and for me the mistakes that i made was involving my friends for him the mistakes that he made will be involving his family in my opinion i mean what it was was truthfully we kept telling whoever we were telling bad stuff about one another yeah we weren't so, sharing the good stuff we were only sharing the bad stuff and it just made it even worse on both sides so it made like all of my friends were well not all of them but a, the majority of them were very like you need to separate and similar for his family so it was different experiences for us both but it both came down to us kind of moving further and further apart from each other but anyway the the basic start of it, where we started to have a little bit of a separation was we've had two failed pregnancies. Uh, the first one was in 2013, we had a miscarriage. And then in 2015, we had an ectopic pregnancy. If you don't know what an ectopic pregnancy is, it's when the baby is um, stuck in your fallopian tube. And obviously it can't grow there. So I had to have emergency surgery. And like, if you don't have surgery, you can die, blah, blah, blah. I was like, just this really traumatic situation for us in which we both handled it very differently, which is, in my opinion, what caused, for me, the beginning of um, the separation that we went through because I went through a really hard time and I didn't allow myself time to heal. So I was taking a lot of my pain and anger and frustration out on him. He didn't really know how to deal with what I was going through, so he wasn't, in my opinion, like I said, it's being there for me in the way that I felt like I needed him to be, which isn't fair on my part. You know, I was just in such a low, sad place that I couldn't see anything straight. Nothing made sense. So we went through a lot of different things. At the end of the day, all those little things don't really matter. But when it came down to it, um, we, ha we had some fights about stupid stuff like Beyonce concerts and friends and different things that I was doing that was pulling me further away from the marriage like um being dishonest with him about things about my friends coming to town just not being the person that I normally am with him because I was like trying to fill a void in any any way that I could and instead of going to him and looking for him for peace because like I said we were handling it differently I was looking at outside um Sources. sources to bring me that fulfillment that I didn't have and when it was time for us to start trying to have a baby again he was scared because rightfully so like why did I want to have a baby when he and, almost died from exactly <laughs> but we have to keep trying so that that was where it started to go like he wanted one thing and I wanted another like I said we we separated in May and then throughout that month in June, we kind of had a couple of situations where we we weren't together, like we, we were separate, we were living in separate rooms. Um, and we tried to have a couple of people, like our friends, like one of his friends and one of my friends come over and try to like play mediator between the two of us to where, um, to try to help us figure out what our problems were. So we kind of went through everything, the different things that we were having issues with. It was silly things like, Big Daddy, he doesn't like amusement parks and he didn't want to take me to Disneyland, which he still won't, but we're working on that part. Maybe he'll take me one day. Um, 
it was just silly things like that that had just built up and built up over the years that I was just like, no, he won't do this, he won't do that, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, his friend that was here talking to us, he was saying, like, everything you guys are going through is trivial and everything can be handled except for this baby thing. Like, you guys need to decide, are you going to have a baby? Because Kira's not getting any younger and, you know, Brandon, you need to take some time and figure out if that's what you want. And I was like, no, there's no time. Tell me right now, do you want to have a baby with me, yes or no? And he didn't say anything. So I gave him about 30 seconds to answer. He didn't say anything. Gave me about two seconds to answer. I felt like it was 30 seconds. <laughs> he didn't say anything. And I was like, okay, well, that's it. Like, you don't want to have a baby, so I'm out. So at that point, we were still we were still living in the same house, but we weren't together. Like, we wouldn't. Our house is a decent size, so we, like, wouldn't see each other. Like, he, he would go to work. I'd be out you know, in the house, and then he'd come home, I'd go in my room, lock the door, like, literally, literally this went on for three months, so about, um, in August, things got really, really, really bad between the two of us, and literally was the, it was terrible, last, yeah, it was, it was last, really, really bad, like, the it, last straw. yeah, it was the last straw for both of us, um, I, by that time I had gave up, like, I was, like, not even, I wasn't even on, I was somewhere else, when I was at work, when I was here, somebody would tell me something, and I would just be like. And then I was kind of at the point where I still, in my heart, I still had an opening for him, but I wanted him to fix it. Like, I felt like we've been together, like I said, since 2006, and every time something had gone wrong, I felt like I was the one to, something major, that I was the one to, you know, put the pieces of our relationship or our marriage back together and this one time it was like i was empty inside i didn't have anything i was all i was all cried out i didn't have any anything i couldn't do anything so i just was waiting for him but he was hurting so his the people on his side sides i guess um stepped in and felt like they needed to do something to help him and to make him be okay in the end of the situation so long story short i was forced to move out i mean she wasn't gonna budge so some action she was trying to play like she ruled the world and that's how kira do so she ain't used to somebody pushing pushing on her I okay with people pushing on me but it wasn't big daddy that was pushing on me Whoa. and that was what kind of made it even worse because it was because then it was all the outside influences from his side from my side like his side packing my things my side saying you need to leave your husband he's doing this he's doing that and there was no communication between the two of us it was just what everybody else was saying in our ear and like we never talked to each other anytime we spoke we fought so anyway i moved out i moved to the other side of town i got my own place i started seeing someone else which everyone knows because i put it on the internet um big daddy kind of kept quiet for a while he didn't do much of anything we didn't speak in about november i was served with divorce papers I wasn't making the steps to go forward with the divorce. I just was sitting. I didn't, I knew that we were separated and we were getting a divorce, but like a divorce is expensive. I just oh, didn't. Oh, I know. <laughs> he does know because he paid the lawyer fees. <laughs> but that's how you know when something's meant to be when you go through all of that stuff and you still end up back together. So he served me with divorce papers. I answered the divorce papers and it was like um, we were in agreement of, you know, splitting our property, our cars, our house, everything down the middle. But then when I sent an answer back, then his lawyer sent an answer back saying that we weren't in agreement. So then I was pissed. Half. That's what we were supposed We started off doing our own divorce thing on our own. Like, well. I started it. I went down to the place, got all the paperwork, was researching all the stuff that needed to be done because I didn't know nothing about it. Didn't think I needed to know anything about it. And I told we talking about it and she acted like it was whatever. And it was taking too long. She had her little boyfriend. And I'm like, bro, like leave me then. Like don't be, give me my last name back, bro. Like for real. She just kept lagging along. So I had to go 
dig deep in my pockets, touching my ankles <laughs> to get some money to go pay these lawyer fees, and they and then and, and and I was like, I didn't even like the lawyer. Like I wanted to fight him. That's how I knew I needed him because he was a douche. So yeah, he was. Yeah, he was pretty mean. So um, I told I said, man, y'all handle it however y'all need to handle it. So. Whatever they said, I didn't care at this point. Cause I, was like, I tried to be nice about it and tried to to make this thing official. And she just run around going. And <laughs> <laughs> Look at you! I'm Look saying, at you! I'm saying you run around with your living your life, and I'm over here like that. I can't even start one because I mean, it's not that easy to be just coming out here trying to start a new relationship. Like I. You know, use my first real one, so I didn't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes, I am Big Daddy's first real relationship, so that was another thing. So he's never um, experienced all of these different things and issues and reconciliations, all the type of things that go on in different relationships because he's only really been with me, which is great for me because there's no baggage. You know, he doesn't have a bunch of exes, or which is a lot of baggage that I have. <laughs> um christmas rolls around the new year everything like this is our first time spending these holidays not together it was, it was really hard on my it was really hard on I my sleep <laughs> i talk about christmas oh, it was really hard on my family um for thanksgiving and christmas because he wasn't there um it was hard on me too because it was just different um <laughs> anyway, so we go into the new year. You know, I tried to like wash myself clean of the marriage and just be okay with it. You know, like 2016 was a terrible year. It was, but you know what? One thing that I I did and I kind of wish she did a little bit more of, my 2016 was very boring and very... I didn't do too much nothing, but a lot of, like, I ain't gonna say reading, because I don't like to read, but I listened to a lot of audio books, and it was all about how to talk to people and how to just be open and all sorts of stuff. So I was going, I was going through the world just ready to, ready and willing to see who I was, because it's easy to see somebody else's faults, but then you sit there and look at yourself and go, well, well what do people see in like, me? Like, the same thing I see in them. So I was just doing a lot of, like, inner work. He's like, in. Like, a lot. Like, and, um, Is my makeup ugly now? Uh, n n nah. But, um, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I actually went through a whole lot of stuff in 2016. And, um, I don't know, I just, you know... No, I'm still cute. I, uh... Bro, you killed everything. <laughs> anyway, so I was working on myself through 2016, and, like, I had got to the point... I had got to the point where I didn't even know, like, what the sound of her voice was anymore. I didn't remember what she kind of looked like. Like, I used But to, I was getting cute, though, in the process. I just felt like she wasn't the same person to me. Like, all the yeah. stuff we went through... I didn't know who she was. I was like, I gotta let her go. Like, she's somebody else. And, um, you know, I was trying to, I literally forgot who she was. So, and I always wondered. Yeah, like, he didn't call. He didn't text. You know, I he didn't, didn't like, we did not. I was trying not to care. So, yeah, we didn't speak. Yeah, because I'm kind of hardcore. So, I, um, I, uh, would always wonder, like, throughout the whole year, like, I mean, even when I was, like, infuriated. And like, cause I'm, I'm not usually, I'm pretty, I don't really forgive too easily, but I can't stay mad for a long time either. Like it just takes too much from me. Like I was extremely tired in 2016 from being so angry. Cause I, I hated her. And after a while, I kind of like, it was just whatever until somebody tell me, oh, you know, Carrie doing this, Carrie doing this, Carrie got that boy. And this, I'm like, whatever, like what's that got to do with me? Like I'm doing my own thing. So. I would always wonder, like, what would happen if we saw each other, if I saw her walking with her dude or something, if I would try to fight him or, act, you know, be too cool and not even notice her or, or whatever, or be friendly with the guy and go, oh, yeah, you know, this is mad or whatever. And I just didn't know. Like, I would always, it would always be a different outcome every time. 
So when we find when I finally saw her, wait, we gotta tell them how I got to that point. Oh, well. Okay, so y'all know, um, while I while we were separated, for me, what was good about it was I found myself again. I had, I felt like I spent a lot because he was new to relationships. I felt like I spent the majority of our relationship and our marriage like helping him teaching him and like trying to make sure he knew what was going on and i feel like i forgot about myself um because all i cared about was big day and i feel like i i lost a little bit of cure so and i learned to love myself again no matter what size i was no matter how i felt i looked or didn't look i i started to love myself all over again and that brought on the biggest change in me because it didn't matter to me anymore if somebody didn't think that I was beautiful because I wasn't a size two or anything like that and so um I started working out and that that changed me like I said I became a better person I started to care about myself more and I wasn't just giving 150 percent to makeup makeup over everything not makeup over everything so I uh, found some balance in my life work-wise I decided to only work for myself and not freelance for any agencies which dropped a world of stress off of my shoulders as much as I didn't spend that time reading and like really trying to better myself on a more uh, spiritual deeper level like he did I had changes as well that were able if those things did not happen while we were separated I don't know that we would have been able to come back together so amazing as we have so anyway so we come into the new year we're still not speaking going through the divorce proceedings um we have a court date scheduled for like march 15th or something like that i needed to drop off a check to our house for my part of the car insurance so i was just gonna drop it off and put it in the mailbox so when i turned down the street big daddy was outside taking the trash out which obviously i could not bring, have bringing the trash in whatever he was outside waiting for me <laughs> i just kidding he didn't know it was coming i didn't call him i was just gonna put the check in the mailbox and drive off so when i turned down the street he was facing the street so like as soon as i turned he saw me and like what did you do do a double take <laughs> look i froze up looked at the vehicle and said nah bro like ain't no reason why she'd be turned down the street she don't need to be around here i'm just like what <laughs> what is she doing so then she stops at the mailbox and just sits there and I'm just Cause I was literally shaking. I put on my check and I was like, oh God, what's happening? So I was about to head back in the house like, but then I, I mean, I don't know, I just stood there and I was like, you know what? Like, just, I don't know, see what's going on. So I stood there for a second. So I started walking towards the car. I think you turned around and was heading towards me. And I was like, what's going Yeah, cause on? I think at that point I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna give him the check. And then when I went to turn, you were walking towards me. Ooh, yeah, so then, fake guys. so then, yeah, I was like, so, I mean, what's going on? She said, oh, I'm just going to give you the half of the, for the insurance. And I was like, about time. But, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the shade. <laughs> but, uh, so then, yeah, I took the check and I was just like, like, I didn't feel anything though. Like, I wasn't mad or happy or sad or anything. I was just like, well, okay. So then I just walked away and she drove off. And then she texted me immediately, telling me some. Oh, okay, see? it was like five minutes because I was almost to the freeway. So I was like, "Hey, um, would it be okay if I see the dogs for a second? Because he was holding them hostage. When let Those me see. Those are my dogs. Well, let me see my little babies. So, so I was like, "Hey, can I see the puppies for a second? He was like, "Yeah, well, let's just meet at the park." So anyway, um, he came. I was sitting there for a minute, and then he came around the corner, and it was crazy because it was like just like how he said how he didn't feel mad or angry. Like I didn't feel like oh my god. But I didn't feel upset. I felt like, where's my husband? Like, it felt so like, what's my husband? You know, like, I don't know. It was weird. So anyway, we were there for about 10 minutes. We didn't really say anything. I kind of just played with the dogs for a minute. And then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll see you in court in a month. And he was like, okay, I'll see you in a month. So 
I said we talked for a little bit and then the next day um I was working and then he texted me and he was like hey you know are you busy are you still super busy on Saturdays even though he had already known that I wasn't working for the agency anymore because mama told him because she was on his side the whole time she was telling him everything she was literally telling him everything they was best buddies I'd be like mom don't talk to him she's like he's my friend Kira exactly Exactly. Anyway, so um, he was like, do you want to sit down and talk for a little bit? So we met up. He had bought a motorcycle. I was like, what is happening it here? It wasn't a moped. Bro. He told the internet he bought a moped, but it really was a motorcycle. So um, we met up, and then we went to the park. And oh well, no, my battery died. Oh yeah, his battery died on <laughs> his motorcycle. My battery died on my bike, so I had to ask her for a ride. Yeah, I was on trying to stunt on my bike. Like, <laughs> check me out. Now I look stupid. <laughs> so we went to the park, and we talked for twelve hours straight. And it was the first time in the whole time that we had been together that I felt like both of us were able to hear each other. A lot of times in our marriage, um, Big Daddy have, or our marriage, our relationship, anything, Big Daddy will usually be the one to start the fights or do something that would make me mad. And he, don't listen to them. He know that's true. That, and then, so I always, I always had this, like, I carried it over my head that I was perfect. Like, oh, in this conversation, I was finally able to hear him. Um, as far as all of the things that I had done that emasculated him, that hurt him, that put him in the place as to where he felt like he wasn't good enough. Um, and it was eye opening. It was like, damn Carrie, you're not perfect. On top of everything that I had done during our separation, which y'all all know, cause like I said, I put it on the internet. So now it was kind of like we were at this even playing ground because I wasn't in my own eyes perfect anymore. And because we weren't together, there was no expectations. It was like we could just hear each other and have like closure. Like, okay, that's why you did this. Well, this is why I did that. It made me feel this way, blah, blah, blah. I just, and we went through everything through the whole time, every time we lost the baby every fight every any anything that had happened over the at that time 10 years um that hurt each of each one of us so when we left that night it was just like okay well our marriage was terrible so we're gonna still get a divorce and who knows what's gonna happen one day in the future like maybe god will bring us back together later so let's just be friends and you know whatever big daddy dated a little bit while we weren't together but it wasn't anything serious so it wasn't like we had to deal with a bunch of issues with that a couple here and there but nothing that was to the extent of what i was going through so like I said, we said we were gonna be friends. So we started just like, we were texting. Big Daddy told me that he wanted to get back together. Um, and he was very much like, whatever I, whatever you want, whatever you want. I, I just want our family back together. I want us back together, I want our life. Um, and I was kind of like, well, what about this? Like, what about a baby? And he was like, we can have a baby. And I was like, I don't wanna live in that house no more. I want a new house. He was like, we can sell it. I was like, what if I don't lose any weight? He's like, you look fine how you are. Like every, any, anything that I wanted. And I knew that he had changed. I could see it, but I still wasn't 100% sure because I was just like, you know, I've seen this before. I've seen him say he was going to be different, that this was going to be different. And it's, it's changed before. So I was like, I'm just going to take a little bit of time. And he was very much like, Take your time, Kira, decide. <laughs> you know, I want you to choose me because you love me, not because you feel like you have to, because we're married, I'll respect your decision. I support your decision either way. I was like, okay, cool. Then, <laughs> he went crazy. 
crazy. And he was like, but it was the it was literally the best thing that could have happened because it was it was in the moment that he went off the edge a little bit that I was like, okay, Carrie, you're tripping. You need to go back to your husband. He was like, I'm done with this. You're not about to be going back and forth between him and I. I'm your husband. You need to bring your ass home. And I was like, okay. And I knew that I was going back to my husband that day we sat in the car. I didn't know how. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do because I had thoroughly embarrassed myself on the internet. And I was just like, shit, like, how am I going to pull this off? Like, I'm going to hurt somebody in the process. Everyone's going to think I'm crazy. My friends are going to be like, what the hell? And like, we're supposed to be getting divorced in 30 days. Like, we was going to look crazy. We, we was going to look crazy to everybody. Yeah, you know we were. I mean, I didn't really. I didn't care. Yeah, I didn't really care too much. But I show, boy, I look, let you me did. tell you a little something. <laughs> You better tell you better tell whoever that that's a rap bro like and I you know I pulled off one of the things that I was just like hey you need to get your ass back over here and I never act like that usually he like, doesn't obviously when I left I didn't leave it wasn't like okay I'm gonna do all this in hopes that he changes I left and I was just like I'm done but you can't do that in a marriage you can't just give up as soon as times get hard. And I gave up, like I, but it wasn't, it wasn't just because I couldn't deal with what was going on in the marriage, it was the baby. Like I was so sad and I didn't even realize how like I was holding on to that sadness until I felt something worse, which was- Can I, can I make some coffee and you still? Yes. Until I felt something worse, which was being away from him. That was like, it was worse than the pain of losing the two babies. As much as that hurt, like, going through what I went through without him. And I I held my head as high as I possibly could throughout the time. But it was not easy. It was not easy getting up every day. <laughs> it was not easy getting up every day and going to do people's weddings when my marriage was falling apart. <laughs> After somebody that I have been with for a decade. <laughs> just <on> my nerves. <laughs> it was so hard. And like, decided, or when I decided, like, okay, I'm going back to my husband. Obviously, I had to figure out a way to end things with the guy that I was seeing. And I was kind of just like, I messed up. Like, we're adults and we didn't handle this the right way. Like we should not have, we're, not only are we adults, but we've known each other for too long to to act like what we did was okay. On, in any, any way, shape or form. Like we should have respected each other and my marriage enough to not have started some full blown thing while I was still married. I was blinded by a lot of things. And if I would have just sat down and prayed or listen to my mom, it wouldn't have happened. I just was like, I'm gonna rip the band-aid off. I have to just tell everybody what I did. I'm just gonna tell everybody we're back together. And we received so much love. And it was amazing to see how many people have been praying for us, how many people still believed in us, beyond the people that didn't, on my side, on his side. There were so many of you guys that really did think that we were going to figure it out. And I am so thankful for that because I didn't know that people cared. And when he fixed it, when he, when he asked me to come home, when he told me to come home, he saved me because I was on a really bad path. And I don't think that that would have ended very well for me. This is, it wasn't what my life was supposed to be. I wasn't, I wasn't meant to live my life with somebody that's not him. And I can't believe that I walked away from that. I can't believe that I just, as soon as times got hard, as soon as I couldn't figure something out or something wasn't going the way that I wanted it to, I was just, what are you doing? is completely different we handle each other with so much care um before we kind of used to just pop off honestly
honestly, we rarely have issues anymore because, like, once you go through all of that, like, it was... And, I mean, what we're telling you, like, that's not even, like, the, the nitty-gritty of everything. We're just nicer to each other. Like, if we have a problem, if we need to take a minute to calm down, then we calm down, and then we come back to it and we talk about it later. Um, we used to let problems fester. Like, we would have the issue, we would fight, and we would not... It started off, we wouldn't talk for a day. Next fight, we wouldn't, start, we wouldn't talk for three days. Next fight, we wouldn't talk for a week until we didn't talk for a year. Well, yes, and plus, sometimes you just got to know who you dealing with. Because, like I say, I mean, I know, I mean, she could be even wrong sometimes in my book. And if it's not that big of a deal, I kind of just like, whatever. Like, it's not really worth an argument. We don't, uh, we don't name call. We don't. But yeah, we're like I said, we're nicer to each other. And if if we do step out of line, we don't let it go. Like if I do something wrong, I come back and say, you know what, that was wrong with me. I shouldn't have did that. And him as well. He's better at that than I am. What I mean by it now is that in this point in life, we truly are best friends. Like nobody comes before him in my life. Nobody comes before me in his life. If you don't mess with him, you don't mess with me, and vice versa. Like it is not. It's him and I against the world at this point. It's just completely different now because we put each other first. Because we put our marriage first. We don't um, we don't let problems fester. We don't not talk for a week if we're upset with each other. We might give it a day until we can like figure out how to express our feelings and how to talk without all the extra shit. Well, I let go of anger pretty easily. So like it wasn't really that hard for me. Once I'm over something, I'm just over it. It's a little bit harder for him. I mean, the anger was gone a while back. Like I said, I mean, so you know, just knowing that she gonna really be if she come to me telling me something, she probably really feels some some way about it. So I'm just sit there and listen, and if it makes sense, then it makes sense. Like you gotta be receptive. I mean, anger just makes you tired anyway. Like. It's easy to forgive when you realize that you're better together than you are apart. We can do it without each other. We just don't want to. Like, and once you realize you would just rather be with somebody than go through all it. Like, you're going to have problems no matter who. Plus, I'm too annoying. He's so annoying. So it was easy to forgive. Like, I mean, of course, there were times, you know, when something from the past would come up. But like I said, we really had a clean slate. I did so much shit during the time we weren't together. He did so much shit when we were together that like starting over was very easy because it was it was the even playing field. And it was nice because it was like we got to date. Like when we first started dating when we were 20 and 21, we didn't really, there was no courtship. We just started dating. We were kids. Like She was a cougar. I was not a cougar looking for the shade again. <laughs> but this time like we dated and like, we, it was like we fell back in love so fast again and so hard all over again that it was like, we were like, why are we living apart? Why are like, we're married? We need to, and we just quickly figured out how to make our lives work again. Like, we, and it, it, it blossomed into so much more than just, um, than just our reconciliation because we started a new business. We started an Airbnb business with my loft, which was amazing. We He started his business, which I don't know if that would have happened while we were together because he needed that time by himself to, to grow into who he is as a man without me breathing down his back or making him feel less than or anything like well, that. I would always be in this slump seeing her like loving something to me, like kind of liking a lot of things. I, uh, I love working out, even though I'm, you know, I'm, I, uh, I, bro, why are you always messing up? Yeah, what made you realize you wanted to be back with me? Mm, I was bored. Okay. <laughs> and like, there was nothing else out there. Like I, you know, like there's a lot of stuff out there that I feel like I want. But when I was like going to try to go and seek that, I was like, bro, like, what about all the stuff that I like need and, and had, you know, like all that stuff is hard to find all in one. So, you know, God, the God and the universe be doing what they do. Like I avoided her like a plague when we first sure did. met and this is and that. And, 
you know, supposedly your life is already planned out for you. You the one who end up veering off course and getting back on it and veering off course and getting back on it. So I was always supposed to be with her and she's always supposed to be with me. But, um, you know, stuff happens. And but I do. I, I thank God because I know without God it wouldn't have happened. Like it was divine intervention, us running into each other at the mailbox. Him saying, Kira, I'll, let's be back together. Then him saying, Kira, bring your ass home. Like, all of it was absolutely what I needed. And I'm so thankful because I believe that I'm able to have the life that I'm destined to have now. And no matter what we go through, we get to go through it together. I don't want to go through it with anybody else. And I know that you can make a marriage work. You just have to try. Yeah, some, sometimes you just got to just know what's going on. Like, I know I'm, I'm never going to get a gift on the holiday. I might get it a week after, maybe even two. And he has to be okay with that. Yeah. Okay, guys, we hope that that helped and we hope that you share this video and I hope that it'll help somebody and give somebody some hope and let them know that all is not lost if they are struggling in their marriage. Even if you're about to get a divorce or even if you got a divorce, you can you can fix it. You just have to want to and you have to pray. The lawyer fees you might not be able to fix so easily. <sighs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> give a kiss. Bro, you got lipstick on?